We are joined by a true patriot icon, Red Beckman, influential figure, uh, really in the founding of the modern reassurgence of the militia movement, uh, anti-private federal reserve activist, uh, the founder of the fully informed jury association movement, uh, the co-author of The Law That Never Was, The Fraud of the 16th Amendment, and Personal Income Tax by Bill Benson and M.J. Red Beckman. Uh, just an amazing individual, author of so many other books, Born Again Republic, Walls in Our Minds, IRS, and the Black Robed Cover-Up. Uh, I mean, he is the proto-Tea Party. He is the proto-Ron Paul. He is the... Uh, there's very few people, what, a Bob Chapman, a, uh, oh, there's people like, I mean, I mean, there's not many others out there, uh, G. Edward Griffin, but Red Beckman has seen this from the very beginning when he got out of the Air Force uh, in the 1950s and witnessed uh, how America was changing, and I wanted to get him on uh, to pick his brain about the way America's changed. Uh, what concerns him most, uh, what he thinks is most positive and most negative. And we're seeing a real heat up going on right now, a full rollout on MSNBC, CNN, 60 Minutes, CBS, newspaper articles saying, if you want to abolish the Federal Reserve, you're American Al-Qaeda. If you got a Ron Paul sticker, you're American Al-Qaeda. If you don't want to turn your guns in, you're American Al-Qaeda. If you don't like government-run health care, you're a white supremacist American Al-Qaeda. Uh, and, and I see a real preparatory phase where they're saying these groups are going to stage in Oklahoma City. And White House advisors, uh, several of them, even Glenn Beck covered this three months ago, have come out and said, listing myself and Glenn Beck of all people, that we're going to cause a new Oklahoma City. And then they go on in, in the internal letters that have been public saying how great one would be and how it would help their agenda. So the real restoration movement against the globalist revolution to, to destroy our republic and make us debtor slaves is in high gear. Uh, and the revolutionaries, uh, the, the cannon fodder communist and their elk, the collectivist, they're being told that their gravy train is going to continue, their welfare train, if they can destroy the middle class. And, of course, they'll never even get any of the chicken feed. That'll continue to go offshore. Now, George Soros, according to uh, even the Associated Press, Fox News, and other breakdowns, has spent $46 million so far this year. He's gone into high gear with color revolution leftist groups because they know the revolution's coming with the collapse of society. And uh, I asked Red Beckman in, in the last break, I said, what is most important? We were getting ready to come on. What do you want to talk about first? And he, he basically said what I just said. Uh, from a historical perspective, he called it stealing the revolution or stealing the restoration is what I would uh, dub it. These are the most dangerous times we've ever been in. The, the, this same group of international banks that are based in Europe where the bailout money went financed the Russian takeover on record. They financed Hitler as a wind-up toy. That's on record. So they can then counter him. Uh, th they do plan a hot revolution. And the Marxist-Leninist... Um, Leadership does say blood is the answer. I sat across the table a few weeks ago from a, a well-known leftist who confided they were really a Marxist and blood was the answer after they had a few drinks in them uh, and, and said it very proudly. Uh, but uh, it's going to be blood of somebody that owns a car dealership, not of the globalists sitting offshore. It's going to be the blood of anybody that's got one more dollar than them. And this whole thing's been financed by the Ford Foundation and others on record. Uh, the illegal alien brigades, all of it. Uh, but the globalists are in trouble. The awakening was stronger than they predicted it would be. They knew moving this system in, there would be a counter to it. And uh, Red Beckman uh, joins us. Uh, uh, Red, uh, break down your concern and the message we've got to get out to the Tea Party uh, dealing with uh, the uh, stealing of the revolution. Um, the, um, oh, by the way, it's uh, real good to be back on your show. Uh, been a while since I've been on, and, uh, anyway, um, I, uh, I, I think that the Tea Party thing, um, you know, I was afraid they might kind of fade out and, uh, and, uh, and kind of disappear after the election, but that's not the case. They are continuing to learn and uh, and grow, and um, and this is one of the best things that we've ever had happen in the country. Because
because they are continuing, and there's no way with uh, the the radio talk shows and the internet and everything uh, they they are learning. They're getting uh, you know an education on uh, on how uh, this thing has deteriorated and who's behind it, and uh, it's been. Uh, uh, a real gratifying thing for me because um, uh, way back there, 25 years or so ago, people would ask me, they'd say, well, uh, when is this all going to happen? When are we going to get this turned around? And I, I would tell them, I'd say, it's not going to happen until we have an economic meltdown and then we'll have the people's attention. And that's exactly what has happened. And uh, and so what we need to get across to the Tea Party people is that it's actually a very small minority. Uh, the international bankers and the George Soros's and and uh, the schemers, they're a very small minority. The Tea Party people are the majority. Uh, and when I say Tea Party, I'm, I'm thinking of not just, uh, uh, you know, the people that call them Tea Party uh, people, but uh, I'm, I'm just guessing that there's probably ten times as many people out there that think like uh, the Tea Party people that are just laying low and just trying to learn and, and, and play catch-up on what has happened to our country. And so um, the majority in this country right now uh, are swinging over uh, to our way of thinking. Uh, we want to be free. We don't want uh, to be governed, and uh, we don't want to be plundered by uh, uh, that elite uh, group of uh, bankers and uh, international uh, scoundrels and uh, uh, I'll tell you the one thing that the scoundrels, uh, the Bolsheviks, I'm going to call them the Bolsheviks, just like in 1917, uh, they, uh, they can only operate if the people are ignorant and don't know about their schemes. And so it's of the utmost importance that we get across to the people the Tea Party people, the majority in this nation, uh, the story of these scoundrels and who they are, and when that happens, they're exposed. And uh, and never forget, we still have our guns in this country. Yeah, this and, isn't uh, Russia, where you had a bunch of good Christian, hardworking, but disarmed uh, peasants who'd already been under tyranny of the Tsar and just traded it out uh, for something far worse. Uh, Red, I want to bring this up right now. Um, we have Newt Gingrich, who I hear mainline talk radio hailing as this great conservative. Newt Gingrich is an anti-gun, pro-socialist health care, pro-carbon tax pusher. And I tell Republicans this face-to-face -face and they laugh at me. And then on my iPhone at restaurants and on the street or with neighbors, I can pull it up and show him on TV ads for carbon taxes. I can show him for a socialist health care. Uh, Mitt Romney raised $10 million in, in a few hours from corporate donors. Uh, Mitt Romney uh, helped write the bill in Massachusetts for socialist health care that is the model of Obamacare. Yes. And you tell, you tell some of these Tea Party people this and they laugh at you, kind of like I was in uh, McBride's gun shop a few years ago and Bush was still in office and a guy came over, it's a big gun shop, and said, Alex, I don't appreciate you lying about President Bush and saying he supported the assault weapons ban. I didn't get mad. I said, well, I said, it's a fact. And then the owner comes over, or one of the managers, I believe it was the owner, and says, no, Mr. Jones is right. He did. And the guy went, oh. So, you know, these people have almost invincible ignorance. And, and, and uh, I remember two and a half, three years ago, right when Obama first got in, uh, Rick Perry was being booed by the, quote, Tea Party, Senator Cornyn right here in Texas. And the, and the left and right establishment got desperate. And they rushed in. They rushed in. And they tried to make it a partisan issue. And they said, it's only Republicans. They're being bussed in. 
they're being paid for by the Republican Party. And then the Rep so Democrats wouldn't feel like, hey, I'm against the big banks and bailouts. It was more of a Ron Paul movement. It was honest. It was honest. They were booing Republicans and Democrats. I mean, they they had it, you know, uh, straight. Uh, they were Red Beckman, Alex Jones listeners. And then the Republicans to 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 uh, basically fulfill that false prophecy ran in with buses and TV ads and Fox pushing it with their own Tea Parties run by Dick Army to try to co-opt it, but it hasn't been totally successful, and that's why whenever. Uh, this, this creature, uh, this globalist, who openly calls for world government, Newt Gingrich, comes out and says, we need to not be hardcore Republicans. We need to not cut government. That's why they've now rebuked him, and he was one of the front runners. He's now dead meat because the Tea Party has gotten in his face and said, you're a, you're a shameful creature. And so what you're saying is there's a battle over the soul of the Tea Party. Uh, absolutely. And... Uh uh, you know, there's something else that is feeding into this, um, this whole picture. Uh, uh, Stay there. Tell us about the something else on the other side. Then we'll look at all the movements you founded. And not because we're tooting Red's horn. It's an example of the power of the individual when they have knowledge and the true role of government in our republic. Living legend, Red Beckman, straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Red Beckman is our guest. Uh, Red, you were getting to a point as we went to break. Uh, yes, and, and of course you brought up, uh, you know, different organizations that I've been a part of and, and such. And uh, you had mentioned uh, Aladask and, uh, and the 60 Minutes uh, segment that they had on Sunday night uh, that were... Uh, they, they were really uh, down on anybody that uh, uh, has anything bad to say about our government. Uh, I didn't see the program, but I know Al asked quite well. He's a very sharp, sharp American and a very patriotic American. And uh, uh, they were uh, ridiculing the idea of this sovereignty. And uh, I couldn't help but chuckle when I heard about it because uh, all you have to do is ask an attorney uh, about one person on a jury having the authority and the power uh, to hang a jury. Uh, one person can hang a 12-person jury and, and there is no conviction when that happens. Uh, and, of course, this is where I uh, started when I started uh, teaching about the jury and jury nullification. Um, I got a handle on that at a very early date of how that we the people have sovereignty, and it is proven uh, when we uh, get into a court and... Uh, uh, one person hanging a jury in a tax case or any other case where the government is harassing the individual, uh, one person has more power than the President of the United States, even if it's Obama. Uh, one person has more power than the Congress, the House and the Senate combined. One person on that jury has more power than the whole nine, ju uh, nine justices of the Supreme Court that are nothing more than government agents because they're all government employees. And uh, so one person has that power. That tells us that the people are the sovereigns, not the government. And uh, there's many other ways that we can, uh, uh, you know, identify the sovereignty of the people. But uh, it would be uh, uh, really great if the Tea Parties would pick up on this uh, sovereignty thing and, uh, and recognize the power of a jury. And, of course... Uh, I was the inspiration behind the formation of, of the uh, Fully Informed Jury Association. Uh, I didn't help um, uh, Don Doig and Larry Dodge uh, to start that organization, uh, but in, uh, I started the ball rolling in December of, of uh, 1979. Uh, I spoke at 
the Libertarian State uh, Convention, the first Libertarian Party, the modern Libertarian Party, uh, their first state convention in Montana, Larry Dodge and Don Doig were there. It took 10 years for them to really grasp. We crossed trails uh, a number of times, of course, and, uh, and I kept telling them about, uh, you know, the jury power. And uh, then in 1989, 10 years later, uh, they had gotten enough of a, of a uh, you know, a, a mental uh, strength there that they had gathered together uh, to where they recognized that I was correct in what I was saying. And uh, they, uh, they put that organization together, and that organization is doing a great job right today. And, uh, and that's caused the uh, globalists. It really uh, it is a, uh, a tremendous thrill for me when I uh, see what they're doing and uh, how they're growing. And, uh, and it's just everything is working for them. And, of course, the Tea Party people need to pick up on this jury thing and how important it is. So, uh, Ned, we, we, uh, we've got a long segment coming up. And, and we'll be able to continue to break uh, this down. I, I want to get into the Federal Reserve, the income tax being a fraud, the facts on that, your ideas for restoring the republic. I also want to talk about the, the true role of the jury uh, with you on the other side. Red Beckman is our guest. And the fully informed jury association has done such a good job educating jurors that the globalists are trying to move to get rid of juries on Red Beckman. Uh, Red, you specifically off air made the point to yours truly that you don't see any way that this system is not going to collapse and that it's through that crisis that the establishment is going to try to put forward its false solutions, which are more of what brought us to this point. Yes, that's why I, uh, I stress that um, uh, the Tea Party people and the people that think like those uh, Tea Party people uh, really need to recognize the fact that they're the majority, uh, that they are armed and they are becoming uh, informed uh, about what's happening in our country uh, because they need to have a lot of confidence. They need to have the kind of confidence that uh, will help them to... Um, you might say counter uh, all the propaganda and such that's put, uh, going to be put out by the major media. Because we have to recognize that the major media is not on the part of we the people. They're not representing us at all. And so um, uh, we've got to get it across to the Tea Party people that we are the majority. And we are not going to tolerate, uh, you know, a takeover of our political system like they did in Russia back in 1917. We're not going to let that happen. We uh, have learned some lessons from what happened to those people back then. We're not going to let it happen. We don't have to let it happen. And so um, I just, uh, I, I'm always the optimist. And I think we've got a lot to be optimistic about at this point in time. And, of course, you mentioned the Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, believe you me, I, before people had their houses foreclosed and all, you couldn't uh, explain anything to them about the Federal Reserve Bank. They just didn't know. They thought it was uh, part of the federal government and all that. When somebody gets in that kind of financial trouble where the where their house is being foreclosed, uh, you can educate those people. You can tell those people about the Federal Reserve Bank, and they can grasp what you're saying. And so it isn't necessarily just the ones that have the houses foreclosed, but uh, your neighbors all around you. Well, I'll tell you what they really grasp that it was secret where the tens of trillions went, and when we finally found out about where some of it went, it was to foreign offshore banks who yeah. owned the Federal Reserve. It was to media, thousands of newspapers, MSNBC. Rachel Maddow is paid by the Federal Reserve with our money to sit there and say people that don't like the Federal Reserve are terrorists. I mean, this is outrageous, naked propaganda 
And uh, as people learn more and more, uh, I mean, take Iceland. They said no. Uh, had a game of brinksmanship with the IMF and World Bank. The British government started suing their government. Uh, the people rebelled for over a year until their government got in line. And they discovered over 90%, it was like 91%, of the debt was owed by the very banks saying that Iceland was in debt. And the same thing just came out over 80% in, in, in Ireland, that, that they didn't owe this. The banks, too big to fail, say, we've got to raise your taxes. We've got to do all this to you or the economy will implode. You owe us this, but only because they bought off the governments to have them to sign on to it. And the big Federal Reserve lackeys, the IMF World Bank lackeys, have on record positioned the U.S. and Europe for economic implosion as economic hitmen to go into receivership. This is on record, but they've, they've, they've miscalculated because now we go from Ron Paul having no co-sponsor 16 years ago for his bill to audit and then basically end the Fed. And now it passed the House, was killed in the Senate. The point is, that's why Bozigna Brzezinski last year came out and said, the elite are in deep trouble. For the first time, all of humanity is awake and staring at the elite. We're not staring now at their puppet front men, Republican, Democrat, that come and go. People are really starting to learn about who really runs the show through fraud and how these big mega banks have record bonuses from our tax money and uh, th th that even the austerity they're talking about is just to cut government so all the money can go to the bankers. We're saying no, get rid of the Federal Reserve, write off the quadrillion in derivatives first, then we'll talk about getting rid of all this welfare which is what they use to make people dependent so they can use the welfare hordes as an army against the middle class, you know, the elite's cannon fodder. Uh, so it's all coming to a head. Red, let's talk about who the banksters are, what the Federal Reserve Act is, uh, the, the law that never was investigation. I, I mean, uh, uh, because on the 60 Minutes piece, they're like, what's well, going to run the government if you don't pay income tax? And I love how Ron Paul always points out on TV when they say that. That the capital and the whole government was built without an income tax. So, so, so explain the reality to folks. Uh, you see, um, the Constitution for the United States of America, um, Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, uh, says that the Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, excises, imposts, and duties. Uh, there's absolutely no constitutional basis uh, for an income tax. It's totally forbidden. Uh, the federal government was to um, get the financing to keep itself alive and going. It was to collect tariffs and excises and such. But uh, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 4 says... There can be no direct tax, uh, and a direct tax, of course, is directly on the individual. And so the Constitution, uh, the founders were wise men, and they put it right there in the Constitution, uh, that there can be no direct tax, and the income tax is a direct tax, so it's in direct violation of the Constitution for the United States of America. Um, you know, I remember, I've been around long enough, I remember uh, World War II uh, when Vivian Kellams, the uh, lady industrialist from the East Coast, uh, she took on the Internal Revenue Service and the federal government when they passed this uh, nonsense about the withholding tax, and it was going to be just a wartime tax, and uh, it was supposed to be uh, removed after the war was over. And uh, uh, Vivian Kellams had about 400 employees, and she said, I am not going to do all that additional book work uh, to withhold taxes. She said, it is involuntary servitude. And she ended up in court, and it was a long battle, but she finally won it. Uh, but um, you see... Uh, they told us so many lies, and everything is a lie anymore. You just don't get the truth. They told us that the withholding tax would cease uh, after the war, and uh, it's still with us today, all these many, many years later. And, of course, uh, back in Montana in 1980, 
Uh, we had some farmers, ranchers, small business people and such that got their heads together and said, uh, we're going to find out if the 16th Amendment was properly ratified. Uh, because uh, the 16th Amendment was supposedly uh, uh, ratified so that the Congress could get around Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution and Article 1, Section 9, the direct act. And, of course, uh, those uh, people there in Montana, they, uh, they did a lot of research. They uh, checked with all the state archives and all that type of thing. And uh, by 1983... Uh, January of 83, they had uh, the documentations from each and every state having to do with uh, how the state legislatures had operated and how they had voted for the 16th Amendment or voted against it, or uh, most of them did. In fact, uh, if we want to be technical, and, and of course uh, the law is supposed to be technical, and uh, if, we, if we check the documentation real carefully, not one single state properly ratified the 16th Amendment to the Constitution. And that was 1913 when they declared that it was uh, to be part of our Constitution that it had been ratified. Uh, we, the American people, have been far too patient. We've been far too uh, uh, easy to get along with. Uh, but that is changing, and people now are learning about the 16th Amendment and the fraud. Uh, the But to be the clear, though, because I've read the law that never was. Everything they can. I read. Uh, yeah. I, I just interrupt because I've I've read you, you and Benson's book, and I've, I've gone and you know, looked into it. It is true that none of them properly did it, but from your research, uh, because I haven't read the book in over a decade, how many states just completely didn't even ratify it but were listed? And how did the system get away with that? Why? Because the states were meeting every two years or so, and there wasn't good coordination, and so the feds just announced. And, and at the same time, they got rid of the states having U.S. senators where the states' legislatures would, would, would vote for the senators so they controlled them. Uh, they got rid of that. They gave us the income tax. They gave us the Federal Reserve. I mean, they did it all in one fell swoop. How was that coup rammed through, and did any states complain about it? Uh, there were some states that complained about it, but not uh, to the uh, point where uh, they were heard. Uh, you have to recognize the fact that our media back then consisted of one uh, one thing, and that was uh, newspapers, and that was controlled basically by the William Randolph Hearst uh, organization. And, uh, and even at that stage of the game, uh, the media uh, was already controlled. And uh, the media was, uh, uh, you know, the, the media was uh, not uh, for the people. It was for the elite. It was uh, uh, controlled by the elite. Uh, William Randolph Hearst would have to be recognized as part of the elite. And he was, his news organization, his newspaper, Kingdom, uh, was the source for all information for all the newspapers in the country for the most part. And so um, the people weren't told uh, the truth, and uh, so they weren't, uh, and of course, You've got to remember that uh, they sold this idea to the American people. They said, "We're going to, we're going to soak the rich. We're going to soak the rich. We're going to tax the rich," and uh, and that always sounds good to the low income people. Is to let the let the government tax the rich and leave us alone. Well, it never works that way. They may say that they're going to tax the rich, but it's always the always the lower uh, echelon in the economy that get the taxes. Uh, and uh, y you know, any time that congressmen and senators talk about tax reform, it means just one thing, and that is a tax increase. All right, let me stop you, Red. We've got to go to break. Here in a moment, but but I need to add this caveat. Look at Dominique Strauss Kahn, three thousand dollar a night hotels, you know, jets all over the world, 
on U.S. and European taxpayers. That's who fund the organization. And he's the socialist leader of France set to beat Nicolas Sarkozy in the next election until this latest uh, purported event with him uh, and the uh, sodomizing the lady. Uh, now, now, there's an example right there. The socialist leader is an international banker known for getting countries deep into debt out of fiat they make out of nothing. And there's the Communist Manifesto. What's it want? A private central bank, a graduated income tax, uh, government education, um, all the things that we have. Because this is how the bankers come in and take over your nation. They put in this income tax to be paid to them. Uh, we'll be right back with Red Beckman. We're going to talk about some other key areas Red, as well. Why do you think they're getting so wild now announcing TSA to be on the streets, groping little girls, sticking their hands down their pants, groping Ron Paul, Jesse Ventura, uh, hyping domestic terror? I mean, I think they're really getting ready for some stage terror here. Uh, that's clearly in the cards. We even have White House you know, memos talking about how great it would be. These are very sick people. But do you think this is being done from a point of weakness, or do they think they've got us licked? Um, I think it's a weakness on their part. I think that they uh, they uh, underestimated uh, the American people and uh, and the uh, uh, the power of the people to um, uh, you know to counter what they're doing and speak out. And of course. Um, you know, talk radio, uh, the little underground newspapers, uh, the Internet. Um, my goodness, uh, you know, the Internet is alerting, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of people about what's going on. And uh, I think that the elitists, they uh, underestimated uh, all of this. And, of course, uh, I, I just think that they're in a panic situation because the world has gotten just so small now that uh, where are they going to go to hide? Where Where is there on this planet that they can go and hide uh, and not uh, not be discovered where they're at and, uh, and followed up? Uh, it just... Uh, uh, it's an impossibility for them to um, find any uh, any safe place because uh, they're going to need a safe place if they're going to survive, and uh, and there is no safe place. I'm absolutely convinced of it. The anger of the people, and it isn't just in the United States. Uh, the anger is building up, um, and no matter where you go on this planet. And so uh, there's not too many places for the for the elite to hide anymore. Well, that's right, I, uh, Red. I like that idea. Well, Red, that's right. I, I have a lot of guests I respect on, but they still have this view that the, that the globalists are invincible. The, look at Khan right now. Look at all these guys. They're not invincible. They are just ruthless, and then we're gullible and don't stand up to them. And look at what's happening in many other areas of the world. People are angry, and I... Folks, I am well known. People know what I look like. Many other patriots, people don't know what you look like, so they don't tell you what they're thinking. People know what I look like. I can't go to the grocery store anywhere. I can't go anywhere in the country, other countries now, without almost everybody coming up to me. Uh, but going back to Red on the point of people waking up, uh, again, I'm like a litmus test because people do know what I look like. And... Uh, just everywhere, old, young, black, white, Hispanic, Asian. Uh, I mean, I can go in a restaurant. A lot of nights I'll be coming home at 5, 6 o'clock uh, once a week. I'll pick dinner up twice a week sometimes. My wife calls it in. You know, I go in, uh, you know, sit down at the bar to pick the food up, and the waitress is a listener. And everybody sitting at the bar are listeners, no matter where I go. And people run up to me, and then I'm walking in the parking lot, and people are stopping cars. Uh, and, and, and again, it's not like, ooh, look, Alex Jones is this big star. That's not what this is about. It, it, it's showing that, that sonar ping that we're having a huge effect. I can be in Canada. I can be in Honduras. I can be in Belize. I can be in Mexico. I can be in the Virgin Islands. I can be I mean, everywhere I've gone. I uh, can be in England. I mean, even in England. I was in England five, six years ago. And a lot of people come up to me, but nothing like it is now. 
Uh, in closing, Red, this is very exciting times to be in. Absolutely. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, I've been in the, you know, fully active uh, full time for about 35 years or so. And uh, there's never been a time like this uh, where the uh, where the people are waking up and uh, they're listening. Uh, you know, it used to be that their hearing was so bad they didn't hear, but when they get uh, pinched uh, uh, in the economic vice, uh, then their hearing gets better. And uh, we're seeing that happen right now. I'm sure your audience has been multiplied many times over because uh, it's a, a very good source of uh, information for people. Well, I just know I mean, the reason I, every few weeks, you explain that to folks is people feel like they're alone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're not alone. I mean, if I can get off an airplane in New York or L.A. Uh, or Minneapolis, St. Paul, and I can't get 15 feet, uh, I mean, I've been places with Jesse Ventura. People are running up to him. They're running up to me. Uh, I walk out of the bathroom. They're running up to me. Ventura's, you know, sitting there by his bags. There's 15 people around him. I mean, it, it, it's and, and they're they're liking Ventura because of his show exposing the new world order. I mean, that's the point I'm trying to get at here. Is that is that. I mean, uh, the numbers of people that are awake are much higher than we even know. But one of the last dominoes to fall. The system's already lost its credibility. Congress with a 9% approval rating. Mainstream media falling apart. Dinosaur dying. But the last domino to fall is we don't realize how much power we've got. And I think that's the big secret, Red. Well, that's why I say that, um, you know, there's more of us than there is of them. That we're a majority. And uh, we, uh, we can use that confidence uh, that we uh, get when we recognize that we're a majority. We need all the confidence we can get. And, of course, history is on our side. Um, uh, we can, uh, uh, you, you know, in Russia, the uh, USSR... Uh, hey, well, stay there, over. Red. Stay there. We'll do a few more minutes with you about history's on our side. Final comments from Red Beckman. We'll also give you his P.O. box if we want to get some of his great books and booklets. Red Beckman's our guest. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. Simulcasting, living, streaming color video at PrisonPlanet.tv. Stay because Red started making the point that history is on our side. Uh, this is where the greatest development in human liberty ever took place. That's why the system attacks the founding of this republic and uh, you know looks at the problems. But compared to everything else that came before it, it is the greatest expression of private property, family, liberty, the right to self-defense, revolutionary ideas. It was only the kings, the nobles, in every culture that had rights. Everybody else was seen as animals and slaves. And Red was starting to make that final point. Red Beckman. SSR went down in December of 91, um, it could have turned into a chaotic situation, but it didn't, um, because um, the, the powers that be uh, were such a small minority uh, that they just, they just didn't have the power to maintain control of, of the masses. Uh, in Romania, um, uh, that was uh, Christmas time of '89. Uh, that dictator uh, that had ruled with an iron fist in that country found himself uh, dead, laying in the snow because a firing squad uh, run by the military uh, had put him out of his misery. And uh, it was because the people took to the streets. They went and said, "We've had enough." And we're the majority, and uh, so you're going to have to back off. And uh, this is the same thing that's going to happen right here. I think that our military, uh, they, they know they have been beat up and drugged uh, around, uh, you know, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. These guys are not coming home as happy campers, I'll tell you. And uh, so, um, uh, and of course, you go back in history, Magna Carta uh, came in 1215 A.D. King John in England was a tyrant. And his own, his own bureaucrats, his own administrators, uh, they call them the barons, they put together the Magna Carta, which is still...
Hill, the great charter of England. And uh, between 1215 A.D. and 1776, when our American War of Independence started, uh, there was no less than 43 times that the that the uh, people had to bring their king uh, and their government back under the law, back under Magna Carta. There was 23 of those 43 times that they had to take the sword and uh, use the sword, and they actually shed blood. They beheaded one of their kings uh, because he refused to come back under the law. And so uh, we have a great law, the Constitution, and uh, there are Bill of Rights and all. These are great, great documents, and they are the the backbone of our society here, our political uh, uh, world. And uh, these elitists, they cannot survive if we, the people, start to enforce the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And it's happening, and of course, uh, one of the great things has happened when uh, we started recognizing that federal judges... Uh, are government agents. They are government employees, and so they are government agents. And when they made this ruling the other day that cops can go into a house without a warrant, if that if that doesn't prove that these guys in the Supreme Court, if that doesn't prove that they are, uh, are government agents, they're agents of the government, and they have a conflict of interest. If there is any kind of a controversy between the citizen and the government, the the judge, the federal judge, has his conflict of interest, and it is a jury that is to make the finding of fact and conclusions of law. And so, when we have an informed jury, uh, we know that the government, the government agent sitting there in his black dress, he's not going to be able to control that jury, he's not going to be able to control the evidence, and he is going to be put in his proper position, and that is as a servant. Absolutely, Red. We're out of time. Briefly, uh, you've got a lot of great books and booklets that are very inexpensive. You basically sell them at cost. They've been retired for a long time. Um, you've got a lot of uh, Born Again Republic, Walls in Our Minds, IRS and the Black Robe cover up. Tell us about a few of the deals you've got. Well, and, the and last time I was on your show, we offered uh, uh, a copy of Walls in Our Minds and Why the Militia. Uh, those are my last two books. And uh, we offered the two books for $10. Anybody that will send us a $10 bill, we'll pay the postage and the whole works. Uh, but uh, uh, all you have to do is uh, write to uh, uh, Red Beckman at P.O. Box 61, P.O. Box 61, Carroll, C-A-R-R-O-L-L-S, Carroll's, Washington, 98, 9860, oh, I lost my, uh, I forgot my, uh, uh, my, um, it's, it's, uh, uh, 98609, I'm pretty sure, uh, the zip code. I uh, I guess that 82 years uh, kind of got the best of me there a bit. Uh, but, <laughs> hey, Red, uh, Red, folks know who you are there in your state. It'll get to you. And I, I look, think so. And I look forward to so. having you uh, back on in the near future. God bless you. Yeah, and God bless you, too. All right, folks, there goes Red Beckman, great guy. Uh, and uh, we're just glad to have him. There was a period a few years ago where we really even couldn't have him on because of health issues, but Red is back, and we love him.